Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a replay analysis. Uh, I saw on Reddit someone wanted some help on some games they lost, weren't sure what to do. Uh, and I've been wanting to do some like replay analysis for support players so that the videos can help someone specific but also you know, be generally useful. Um, so today I'm going to be looking at these games from Wandering Cat here, the Jakiro, two Jakiro games. Haven't watched the games yet. Uh, I saw a couple minutes of this game actually because I had a recording issue, so I'm restarting that. But uh, yeah, well, I'll just start. <sighs> Let's see. Um, looking at the draft right now, I would assume because you want to make this game plan in your head, usually in the drafting phase. But I'm gonna do it from you know this part instead and just pause. Um, my lane, if I'm the Jakiro right now, is Jakiro and Naga versus what I would assume is Lone Druid and Tusk, which is a pretty scary lane, um, also considering that they have an Invoker who just used Sunstrike, so we know he's not going Quaswex. He's going to have Sunstrike. So that's a pretty scary lane. Um, Lone Druid's Bear, his E, can work with... Uh, I'm sorry, Lone Druid's Bear will proc Tusk's E, the tag team, so usually you'd only have two heroes hitting you and getting that bonus damage, but in this case you get three. Uh, at least I'm pretty sure that's how it works. It's pretty uncommon to see that, because Lone Druid is not a common offlaner nowadays. But that would be kind of what scares me, is that if someone picked Lone Druid, that's usually someone who likes Lone Druid. <laughs> and so even though the hero's not popular, if the person likes Lone Druid and is good at it, then this would scare me. Naga... She's an okay laner. She has pretty good regen, decent armor, but she can't contribute. Like, she doesn't contribute too much, uh, like, kill potential very early. She just wants to farm, which sounds obvious, but, like, other heroes like Ursa or Sven, they can contribute more to these kind of scary lanes. Naga doesn't do so much. So, my plan is just survive this early stage get Naga to around at least 4 or 5 where she can use her illusions to jungle and then from there she should be able to jungle and lane fairly safely especially once she then hits 6 it should be really hard to kill her she should be fairly safe to be on her own and Kanka should do really well against Invoker assuming they're evenly matched players you can't really you know you never really know in pubs but Kanka should do well and Necrophos He's not common as an offlaner nowadays either, but Necrophos gets online a bit faster. Like, Necrophos, Kanka get online faster than uh, Slark and Invoker. So once Naga can start jungling on her own, laning on her own, you want to start making plays with Kanka, Necrophos. Sand King's really good at this because he's, uh, he's like a stun machine. So between those four, you kind of make space in the early game to mid game while Naga farms. And then in the mid game, that's when the enemy team would start to come online as Invoker hits his Ag, Slark gets like Shadow Blade, uh, Echo Saber, Lone Druid, maybe he has Radiance on his Bear. That's when they start being really scary and can cause a lot of disruption against you. And then you kind of need to be very grouped in that stage so you don't get picked off by Slark. And Slark can't solo kill Naga, so as long as your four people kind of stay together, keep some sentries in like say you play the top half with your team if you have sentries down you don't get picked off because you're four naga doesn't get picked off because she's naga um you kind of just survive this early or the mid game spike of when they're strong and then as you get into late game i would think that naga is once again then the strongest hero as she has her items so that's kind of my game plan Survive the laning stage, start grouping, stay as that group until Naga is totally online, and then just like five man. So that's the game plan going in, and we'll see how it goes to that. Um, both wards, pretty common, four tangos. I would suggest trading out an iron branch, maybe even both of them, for either well if you look at naga's item she has a salve so you get one at least one salve between the safe laner and the support generally especially in against a tough lane like this and because it's so tough i would consider having two salves between the two of you so like 
possibly selling both of these iron branches and getting another salve. Or selling one of them and getting a sentry. Because although one stat is nice in all your attributes, say your camp gets blocked, then you can do very little um, as Jakiro like to pull against their aggression. And so having that sentry can be much better than having that one extra iron branch. And possibly having a salve could also be better. Um, but she has one, although I wish she had bought a second set of tangos. Okay, so right now you see that Lone Druid's bear is top. That's kind of weird. That would confuse me. And I also saw Lone Druid there. So what he can do is just send his bear top and like actually be bottom and then like bring the bear down later. Uh, just to like for scouting purposes. But just then on the minimap, I saw Slark is down here too. So this is already much better. You know, I talked a lot about Lone Druid and Tusk being a scary lane. Um, just to find out, that's not what's happening. But you don't know that until you get to the lane. And that's that's one reason why it was good that you ran out and kind of looked for that a little bit. Or happened to see it anyways. Slark Tusk is much better. For one, the bear is not here to proc Tusk's tag team. So that's good. AFK. This is about where my game crashed. She comes back. Spoiler alert. Alright. So here, I would be careful about blocking. The creeps naturally meet very close to this tower. And so if the enemy team isn't also blocking, you might pull these creeps into your tower range. Oh uh, yeah, I saw it. That's what happens. So right away, that I wouldn't block. Not anymore. You used to want to block. Nowadays, let me free cam this. Okay, so nowadays... Oh, I can't do the tower range thing in this. Or can I? Oh, I can. Okay. So nowadays, the creeps naturally meet, like, right around here, which is very close to your tower already. So if neither team blocks, this is actually a decent area. It's actually even closer than I would want it to be. Um, so you don't want to block unless you see them blocking. Tusk might start shards and block his creeps, um, in which case you would tell when, because you have this ward out here, which is pretty good, um, and because you don't see them blocking, I would not want to block either, because what's going to happen now is this tower is going to hit these creeps, and this is going to push right away, which you don't want. In this case, it's not as bad, I would say, because usually you have, like, an actual offlaner, not a slark. Actually, maybe, I don't know, maybe that's worse. Because Slark is a carry, and you don't want to give him, like, anything. He's playing as an offlaner right now, which is weird. So you want him to, like, struggle to get any farm. And what's going to happen is this lane's going to push now, because all their creeps are going to die, because the tower's hitting them before any... You're going to lose, like, one creep, maybe. Probably all four are going to survive here. And it's going to immediately push, and the other creep wave isn't going to get here till like, somewhere around there. And so immediately you throw your advantage from being here to being here. And so that's already kind of a big mistake that makes the laning stage a lot harder. Not unsalvageable because at this level everyone makes mistakes, so maybe they'll throw it right back at you. But usually as a safe lane support, you don't want the wave to be like rubber banding back and forth between towers. That makes it difficult for your core to farm. You want it to stay stationary, even if it's like out here or something. So yeah, I lost one creep, but all of yours are alive. You haven't used a spell yet. I would recommend throwing a spell out right away, because you have 1.4 regen naturally. So if you just throw out a spell, auto attack a bit, even if they trade with you, you are... Like, you'll be regening naturally now. Right now, all this regen does absolutely nothing for you, because it's not... Because you're full. So earlier, when you were right here and you saw, like, Tusk and Slark... I would suggest throwing out a fire breath, a dual breath, um, auto attacking. If they trade with you, don't run all the way around here. Depends. Depends how hard they commit on you. What you can do is just like cut this tree and you'll be safely in tower range immediately. If you try to like run all the way back, you might die depending how aggressive the lane is. Um, but then that way you would be making use of your regen right now. I should be on player perspective. Okay. This is kind of weird on him. I don't know why he just, like, runs in. You should just dual breath immediately. There you go. Yeah, see, he's like... I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> Very strange. 
Okay, but I like this. I like that you have boots queued up right away. Reason being that, you know, your other early option would be, say, like a stick pretty early. But they don't cast that many spells. This is pretty good overall. You actually hit both of them. That's really value. Um, I would be a little worried about being up here because I know he just spawned and the creeps are coming. Creeps are here. So I would be worried about taking a lot of aggro. But overall, you hit both. That's pretty good. And now they're just, they let you walk away. So I think it's fine. Plus, you have the boots. Okay, that's good. You got the range creep. Yeah, that's the danger of using liquid fire near their creeps. Is that you can lower those kind of creeps. So it's good that you didn't just walk away. Okay, stacking. That's pretty good. Going here. Mm, let's see. How many creeps are there? Okay, yeah, that's that's good. Cause sometimes it's not just about the position of the wave; it's like how many creeps are there. So I wanted to double check that this was a good time to pull, which it is. Eat it up. Something you can do, by the way, is uh, put your courier on the ward. Coincidentally, as I pause, see Naga's about to call the courier. You usually just want to let the mid laner use the courier, um, but if you just put your ward on the courier, then say the off lane or the mid takes it and they didn't have a ward, then you can tell them, hey, there's a ward on the courier, just grab it. And that way you can keep vision on the map by letting your team do it for you, you know, make your job easier as a support. Um, but in this case, Naga's about to call the courier, and if your ward was on it, then you would get it with Naga's stuff and you don't have to use it twice. Pulling. Good stuff. Uh, that's kind of a weird path to take. You should... Okay, now it's kind of making a bunch of sounds because Tusk's doing that. You should just run this way, I think. He's snowballing you, and you know Slark is in this side. So by running this way, you make Slark have to go further. And... Slark probably would have caught up to you here anyways, but the benefit of that is that he like has to run further, then you cut around these trees... This is tempting because it's kind of like more direct to the tower. But again, you run into Slark right away and he's got his pounce. So now you're kind of like, all right, Slark doesn't want to use his pounce. So you get away. <laughs> but usually Slark, I feel, should pounce you here and then they get more auto attacks off. Whereas if you get over here or even run this way, then Slark has to waste all this time just chasing you if he wants to commit that far or just let you go and then run back to lane. Either way, you've bought a couple seconds for Naga, you get away, and eh, they don't get too much harass on you there, so, you know, no big deal. I don't want this video to take forever, so I'm going to try to speed up. Yeah, you don't have to chase that far out, especially when these creeps are... You've got a lot of creeps, so you should be thinking about pulling at this point, or even just, like, auto-attack the creeps yourself. That works out for you, though. Uh... Alright, that's pretty good. Oh, that's unfortunate. I thought you had that, honestly. Uh, okay. You... Mm, there are a lot of creeps here. But, in this case, I think you should just tank them. Because Naga's in this far, and Slark is also low, you don't want to just leave her. You you want to just, like, commit, even if you're just auto-attacking. Slark's, like, this low. You probably would have killed him if you had followed in. He's got minus armor, and you just, like, auto-attack once or twice there. Maybe even trap him in. Uh, I think that would have been a kill. Oh, I should be on you. Or if you were going to back away there, get towards... Uh, or runes. Oh, but see, again, the courier, like, came out all the way out here, and you still don't have your stuff. So that's why I kind of just, like, sit it on the courier, especially in the early game. Try to, like, 
make the most efficiency from the courier. Mm, it's okay. Be a little. Oh, there's a lot of creeps, so it's not such a big deal. Uh, but you do want to be a little careful about hitting creeps with liquid fire. I would be careful about coming out this far because you don't know where Tusk is. And if he just comes in, you'll die. Oh, well, you might die anyways. Oh no. Yeah, that's a case where maybe if Naga had come over sooner. But again, you also don't need to like come out that far. He's already like the tower. It's already so close to your tower, so you're good. You don't need to like chase out that far. Okay, you got a couple wards to place. That's good. Taking a look at mid, see what's happening there. I think that ward spot's okay. A little hard. Does this guy have Quas Wex? Anything? I don't know if that was communicated, but you always have to be a little worried if this guy's gonna have Invis to just get away from a gank. It's kind of hard too. He's kind of low. I would be scared to do this if I was Konka. I think it might have been better. Sand King was walking bottom as you were going top. It might just be better to stay bottom and try to make a play with the Sand King or have the Sand King come mid with you guys then that would be a kill mm, but I think that's okay overall Nago's pretty fine so you're just trying to like be more effective with your time this is another case where you can like just share the ward with Sand King you know you're buying all the wards but feel free to like make other people place them for you so you don't have to be everywhere granted Sand King is just like farming down there so Okay, this is a good start to the game. Slark is a bit higher level than I would want him to be, but Naga seems to be doing okay. There was a point where Naga was ahead. That part was better. Then Slark kind of caught up a bit. But uh, overall, Naga's having a decent start. Much better than if it had been against Lone Druid, I feel. So, that's good stacking. Naga can farm stacks really quickly, so it's definitely good to stack. Try to make a play with a double damage Konka. Naga died, that is unfortunate. Okay, he's got invis now, so now you know. Can't really gank him unless you want to carry detection, which is pretty expensive for you early. But benefit is, see you queued it up, so that is good. The benefit is, even though it's expensive for you, that's really weird. Earn on Exhort Invoker. The good news is Kunkka makes ganking really easy. Uh, that's very unfortunate <laughs> to all get Chaos Meteored, but works out. Yeah, because he has his E, uh, it's like very easy setup for all of his spells plus your spells. Uh, it's kind of worth buying the detection, even though it's expensive, because you can almost be sure you're going to get a kill. Didn't you have something on the courier? Oh, my hotkey does select the courier doesn't work. I feel like you had something on it. That's fine. I, I don't notice when the courier's near me a bunch. I kind of wish teammates would send it to you, but uh... So right now your levels are okay. You might have wanted to buy... Uh... It's a hard call. I would say you, I'm not sure, I would have to go back to see what you bought. I feel like you didn't have this wand completely built before though. I would want to finish the magic tome, or I would want to buy the tome before finishing this out, I think. Magic stick is enough um, in comparison to like, I would rather have a stick and tome than a magic wand and no tome. Because you want to hit six as quickly as you can. This is a really powerful spell in combo with Sand King, uh, even in Snare, um, Kanka any of his abilities like that should be a really easy kill anything with macro pyre so i would want oh that's awkward <laughs> i would want to have macro pyre really quickly get your ultimates get them on cooldown and now you have to like wait a really long time this is really awkward 
Okay, from your perspective, I'm not sure why Slark is suddenly so strong, actually. Like, he's suddenly level 10. I sort of know. Like, I know that Naga got killed and that you've been moving around a bit. But honestly, I feel like Naga should be able to handle that lane. Uh, 1v1 versus Slark. And even with, like, Sand King has been in the bottom area a lot and you've been in and out. So I feel like Slark shouldn't be that strong. Um, which is kind of... Kind of like a bad omen towards winning this game is, you know, you don't know that you, they have a 3k lead or anything, but like Slark, an offlane Slark, should not be the highest level in the game. And some of that is like with that early laning, like that whole rubber banding already starting him off like better than he should be. And then. I mean, I don't hate that you were roaming. I feel like that should have been an okay call. Um, I just don't feel like Naga should be dying so much. I mean, only twice, but still, I don't like. I don't see how seven to ten, eight to ten, really. I don't know how that happened. You might be able to get this kill with Macropire. In fact, I, I know you would with a stun plus ice path. Your mana would be a little tight, but you would get that kill somewhere. Mm, I don't know if you need to use this, honestly. I would just... Well, you don't have... You're saving money for the tome, so in that case, I sort of understand. But other times, I would just call the clarity and... Call a clarity, you have tranquil boots, and then you're good to go, and you don't have to use that shrine. Try to use that ahead of time, I would say. Well... I don't know, you don't have to use it preemptively, but since you knew you were going in and he had it, I would try to get it out faster a bit. But that was kind of a... tough to do gank. And again, it's kind of off the back that you don't have macro pyre yet. Oh, uh, I would get macro pyre at 6. I don't know if that was a misclick, but... I feel like Macro Pyre is a lot better. Like, that's 100 damage per second. A third level of Dual Breath is only adding 20 more, which is 100 over the duration of 5 seconds, which is 1 second of Macro Pyre. And so, see, you finally get your Tome here, and you got 6 like a little bit ago. So, that was like around 13, 14 minutes. But if instead of finishing this wand, or even instead of buying Dust, you had bought uh, the Tome, then you could hit 6 much closer to. 10 minutes and you know there were a couple kills we saw that got missed like that slark kill the invoker kill um it's just it's a lot of damage and you have you have a lot of setup with ensnare sand king stun i don't know why i call some by the abilities and some by like the heroes but in fact everyone has something to make it better necrophos which you haven't seen at all this game uh i realize but between his reaper scythe and his uh, ability to amplify magic damage is it just his magic damage? I think I think it's just magic damage in general. I'm actually not sure. But there's just a lot that gives at least one second, if not more, for... Let me word that better. Everyone has some form of lockdown or slow that would make them, the enemy, stand in macro pyre for at least one second, if not more. And then combine that with... You've been, you started to max ice path, or put more levels in it anyways. Um, so right now at level 2, you're at 1.5. If it was only level 1, 1 second. But 2 seconds in Macro Pyre, that's 200 damage. So that's why I would want that as early as possible. 90, oh, 60 seconds. It's even better than I thought. I thought it was 90 seconds. 60 seconds, very short. You could use that literally 3 times if you had gotten it earlier. And potentially 3 kills or, you know, push out a wave, stuff like that. Right now. There you go. I would throw up Macro Pyre a little sooner in the team fight, I think, but overall, that was not a big deal. It's good, Ice Path, get out. Right now, this is kind of awkward. I guess Sand King has his ult, but you're really low on mana. He used his ult already. 
I feel you guys are pretty low on damage, so I might have just made the call to get out. With Sand King's ult, you might be able to get a kill, but it's a little, a little tough because he doesn't have, yeah, he doesn't have anything. He doesn't have, like, blink or anything. How is he? The setup is awkward. Yeah, he's unhappy with that, yeah. But I don't think that's necessarily Sand King's fault. Like, it's just an awkward to kill to go for because both of you, Necrophos and Jakiro, are really low on mana. So, I just feel like you wouldn't want to make that play. So with the Invis rune, I would actually recommend you run into their half um, to place a ward. You've got two, and you're not really going to gank anyone right now. Like, Sand King and Necrophos are top. I guess they could TP bottom, and you could walk bottom and gank this guy. But I think this would be a really good time to place a couple deep wards, because you have two... And, you know, what better time to do that than while invis? You can just peek up there, see if anyone's there. If no one's there, drop the wards. If someone is there, you know, you just walk away or wander around until no one's nearby. Like, maybe you come to this cliff, hide behind it. Uh, let me free cam this. So, like, you grab the invis rune, you walk up here, scout out a bit, like, scout up here, scout over here, see if anyone's there. If you do see people, then you can come, like, hide behind... Am I zoomed in? I feel like I'm really close. Come hide behind, like, back here. It's nighttime, so that's your benefit. You, like, stand here, put a ward there, and then just TP out or something. Um, and if you don't see anyone here, you can just drop a ward wherever, really. I doubt they would expect a deep ward this at this time because you're invis. So, like, even if you just put it here, which is pretty obvious, I doubt it would get dewarded unless they see you. And mm, maybe something like here or down here uh, here because it sees a lot of camps it sees a lot of open area and because you don't have the t1 tower yet so you want to see when people are rotating in for this so over here would actually be better to see people rotate for that t1 tower but that t1 tower should be fairly easy to get so having it down here I think is a little more uh, like, you'll see people rotating towards mid as well. And since the top tower shouldn't be there that much longer, you don't need to have it, like, strictly here. But I think both are okay. But that's what I would recommend for the uh, Invis rune. Okay, now you're coming to do it. <laughs> I was just talking too soon. Should have just let you go. I would have walked away. That That's scarily close. I don't think he saw you because of night vision, but you should like run up further and then place it back more or something. That is like very close. <laughs> I heard invis. Is that me hearing the enemy team's audio? Yes. So I shouldn't know that. I don't know if you would have heard that. I don't know if that's like a replay bug or something, but this is one reason to play with game audio really high up. Um, because you might hear a shadow blade and you would know. I don't know if you should have heard that or if that's just like replay, but um, if you did hear that, even if you didn't, Slark has been doing well and you should know that shadow blade is coming up. So if you remember what I was saying in that early game plan, if we take a look at this, let's take stock, right? Our early plan was early game should be okay, mid game should be tough, um, late game should be okay. Early game, like five minutes, it was going well. Five to ten minutes, that Slark kind of popped off, and now it's not going well. So that's like off strategy. So you should have this feeling like you're on the back foot now. Not lost, but not ideal. You should know that Slark should be getting his Shadow Blade around this time. He should have it sooner, in my opinion. But, I don't know, offlane Slark, it's kind of weird anyways. But you should know, Slark is probably going for Shadow Blade. We want to be prepared for that. Um, and usually Slark... I, I wouldn't blame you or most people for Slark getting a kill with his first Shadow Blade reveal. Because it's kind of... It's kind of a lot to expect you to like place a bunch of sentries ahead of time. Um, but once he gets that kill, once you for sure know he has it, you definitely want to try to organize your team. Let's play on this top half, 
or let's play on this bottom half, depends on the objectives. In this case, I would want top half because you already have some wards down and the tower is still here. I would say, okay guys, let's play on this top half. I have a couple sentries, try to stay in this area, don't let Slark get these free kills. Naga Siren should be okay. You can give her like one sentry like over here to spot like a common entry path or like somewhere around the farming jungle area. But she should be okay. She can create illusions, she has her song, unless they commit a lot of people to gank her, which you should know because you have, like if you keep a good amount of vision up here with all of you grouped, at least some people should be here to respond to you. And if no one is showing, then Naga should know, okay, I should get out. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so this is now, it's earlier than ideal, but now this is this mid game where you're a bit behind. Um, and so still want to play the way I was saying, like try to be on that group. I wonder if that was a misclick. I feel like Kanka should have X'd the, uh, the Slark. There's, that's not your fault. I wouldn't blame you for dying there, but now, you know, okay. Yeah. You buy up some sentries. I would buy a couple more, honestly. They're cheaper now and avoiding dying. Always ideal. Hopefully you also buy a TP. Nice. Mm, Necker's not doing well. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, I know this replay analysis isn't about Necro. I wouldn't blame you, okay? If you were feeling like, oh, what could I have done more to win this game? If I saw this, I would not be feeling great. Because this isn't something you can control. I, I don't feel like this is the best. This is kind of weird to me, I guess. Like, this looks like he's getting Atos. This looks like he's building something. None of these, like, are cohesive. Like, there's no single item built. And he's decided to go for Radiance. Which is decent on Necrophos overall. But, uh... Like, you're kind of behind. And it's kind of not great against what the enemy team has. Like, Slark and Lone Druid are right clickers, sure. But it's not the same... It's not as effective as, like, against a PL. And it's not like Slark and Lone Druid want to go on Necrophos anyways. So it's kind of weird. Necrophos is still pretty squishy. Mm. But since he's decided to get this Radiance, and he's actually, like, fairly close, this is still, like, a good... Like, it's a good power spike when he gets it. That's a good kill to get, by the way. Slark kill. I don't know how that happened, but it's good to get. Once this guy, at this point, I would be saying, okay. Oh, nice ice path. I did not think he would get that. I thought they should all get out. Okay, that's good. Um, I would say that, kind of tell your team, okay, Necrophos is close to Radiance. Try to get that. Get this tower, get the 20 minute runes, Necro farms. You know, there's a bit of tilt going on this game. Uh, as a support, part of your job is kind of like play like babysitter, like actual babysitter. Like, come on, guys, like we can still win. It, you shouldn't have to, but like that'll help your support win rate a lot. Just like keeping people untilted. But anyways, waiting for the Necrophos, uh, what's it called? The uh, Radiance. That'll be a good power spike for you guys. That's kind of awkward. You should let Kanka go in first. Especially once you miss the ice path, just let Kanka go in first. In this case, it works out, but uh, like just let Kanka walk in and X mark. You had vision of him and everything. Kanka can even set up just like a, a torrent without the X. Oh, this is scary. <laughs> so low health. Okay, you get out. It's all good. Stuff's going on in mid. Try to like take a peek over sooner. So that you can tell what's going on. I'm still watching from your perspective, so even I don't know what's going on. And that's why I don't know what you should do. So, when you see or hear a fight going on, try to, like, not only walk over like you were, but, like, try to, like, look way over so you can actually see. Okay, this is good. I was saying you guys were behind and you should feel a bit on the back foot. Now it should. Now it's back in your favor. 
Uh, I guess that's an okay build for Kunkka. You can't control their build, so I shouldn't comment on it too much. But I think part of like understanding when, like, what can I do to win a game? Sometimes it's like taking a look at what other people have built and understanding. Okay, like I can't affect their item choices. This isn't necessarily my fault. What? I'm bamboozled. I am bamboozled, my sir. Arcane blank straight ags. This is a pretty good timing, honestly, for a support four. But having said that, six zero and three. He's getting a lot of kills. What are his last hits at? Sixty-six. Lions at seventy-eight, though. I'm actually this game's confusing. These are really high. Last hits for supports. What I was going to say is that it looks like he's doing really well, right? And so you might think, okay, Sand King's way better than Necrophos, which might be the case. I don't know. But part of it, part of your job as a support is also to understand that your farm comes at the cost of a core's farm. So Sand King has an Ags, which is decent, I guess. I, I feel like there are better items he can get before an Ags. But like... That Ags is at the cost. That's 4,000 gold that is not on a core hero. I don't know if I like that. But it's not your fault anyway, so... We'll just go with it. Because as a support, like... He has Blink, he has Boots. That's everything he needs as a support to be the initiator. And, uh... Having an Ags doesn't really change that. Like, he already has the Blink to get in range. So, what's the extra range do? And, okay, he applies Caustic Finale, but you're not even a core, so, like, that's kind of weird. You're not carrying any sentries right now, either, which... Okay, see, you knew this is, a This is, like, buddy system up, okay? Against Slark, against any Invis hero, buddy system. Don't walk away from the core, because you're 13, he's 14, but he's a Slark, and he's been getting kills. So if you walk alone, he'll kill you. Um, also in terms of itemization, I saw in your post, someone else already pointed it out, but, uh, yeah, four staff, I forget when they changed it, but now it breaks out of Slark's leash. Um, I kind of forget that too sometimes because leash just like wasn't breakable for so long. Um, well, I guess pounce, it wasn't called leash until recently. In fact, I think it was the leash change that made it breakable. So now you can four staff out and, uh... Four Staff is really good this game. Maybe I should have talked about itemization at the start. But Four Staff, really good against Tusk. You can get over the Icicles, get away from his slows, get out of Snowball sometimes. Um, against Lone Druid, the bear can sometimes entangle. Then you can Four Staff someone forward a bit more. Doesn't do too much against Lion, except like help them get away when they're stunned or hexed. Slark, the leash, like I said. Also, just make melee cores run around. Invoker, get them out or through ice wall as quickly as possible, get out of EMP, get out of, uh... <laughs> Be careful you don't, like, four staff through Chaos Meteor. That does a lot of damage. But, um, you know, if they're, like, facing, like, at a perpendicular angle to Meteor, like, force them out. Um, four staff has a lot of value this game, more so than Glimmer Cape. Uh, Glimmer Cape is pretty good this game. They do have a decent amount of magic between Finger and, uh, Invoker. But... Mmm... I don't know if it's, like, necessary. It's, like, okay. I would say four staff have someone get a pipe instead of a glimmer. And then get, like, maybe Yules. Yules is pretty nice. Maybe Greaves. Well, you got Tranquil, so maybe you wouldn't want it. And you're pretty poor. Uh, It's tough. But probably four staff into like Yules or something. Uh, maybe four staff into Glimmer is also okay. I wouldn't. That's bold. Turning around like that. <laughs> just let your team do it and just stay like. Cast your spell, stay away. And this is why you kind of always want a sentry on you. You like. You don't know where he is. So if you had been able to place a sentry there, you guys would have been able to get it. Try to always like have a sentry on you against Slark. I kind of want to speed ahead. I know this is already going to be like super long, 
So, right now I feel like you guys could win. If I look at your items, like, you guys could win. So what I want to do right now is just, like, find out what threw the game. And having said that, you guys could have lost. Like, they had the lead, and then they got wiped at one point, and you guys have been making pickoffs. So... In the original game plan, should have been okay to win. Then you were losing. Now you're good to win again. And I think I already pointed out some mistakes on why, like, that start got too ahead. Um, some fights and the macro pyre stuff with an early tome. Some of that stuff would have prevented you from getting into that, like, losing back step stage. And that may or may not be the reason you lose. I haven't seen the rest of the game. But, uh, like, those enough... Those things alone are enough to like already like improve your chances of winning this game if you never like fall back. Uh, and honestly trying to improve too many things at once is uh it's really hard to keep in mind. If you take anything away from this replay, take away the fact that you want to hit six really quickly, so get that tome. And then uh Actually that would be the that would be my like one takeaway. Single takeaway, it's that. Other takeaway, keep more sentries with you guys. And don't wander off like this alone. Try to stay like near your friends. Against Slark. That's how you beat Slarks. Stay together. To a degree. Yeah, I know that's confusing, but like you wanna play in the same area. Like now you have good wards top. You'd want your team to just play in this top half. Sand King being disconnected does not help your case. I would just leave. I would not even fight this. When you Glimmer Cape, I know you're sticking around to like, maybe I can help Naga. And none of your team's here. All of their team's here. Just, just get out. Just ditch your carry. The carry wants to stay for the tower. That's very commendable of the carry. You just get out. You're just like this poor support. They're gonna ping, maybe they ping you, they tilt, they're like, why weren't you there to help me? You just ignore that. Like, what are you gonna do? This, you tried to do something. This is what you tried to do, and now you're dead. You can't really do anything for her. And she even had song. She should just song and get out. Um, so, especially Nagas, you should just be able to leave them. That's kind of like her thing. So in this case, I would just, after you glimmer, just walk out, just get out. And now Kunga's dead too. This is a very like classic, like, okay, I need to go try to help, and now we all like start dying. And in fact, you've thrown your lead now. I don't know if you getting out just there. If you get out, Kunga probably gets out. Like if you leave and just say just leave her, Kunga doesn't die there either. Which doesn't necessarily change like whether you win or lose, but it's all about these small steps, right? It's not always one major mistake that loses the game. A lot of these small things are giving them leads that they shouldn't have had. Does he have Ags too? This game is so weird. <laughs> Against the Lion, because they have a lot of burst, Sunstrike, Lion, uh, Slark technically does burst when he like pounces on you. I would think of that as burst. Um, I would want some health, but I'm not sure what... I would probably build, like, a casual bracer on you instead of the, uh, clarity. Get, like, uh, when the game was tough, get a bracer, stick it in. Gives you magic resist, gives you health. You're a pretty tanky hero anyway, so this way... This way... Too many things are happening at once. This way you wouldn't, uh... You would feel safer. I guess, against, like, uh, the burst of Lion and all of that. Um, since Lion got an Axe is definitely a reason someone should build a pipe. Uh, it's awkward for you now because you got the Glimmer. So maybe 4-staff pipe for you would have been a good item choice. Getting Glimmer and pipe on the same hero is really awkward. If Sand King got pipe, that would be great. But if he's not going to get it, then I think you should get it. And if one of these other heroes isn't going to get it, uh, maybe Necrophos could get it instead. This is a decent kill. I was going to say it's kind of awkward. You're like coming in this angle alone, but you kind of had to because of the way it was happening. 
but generally you want to be like Jakiro's really long range, so you kind of want to be like in the back. Sand King should be the initiator in fights. He's not here, obviously, but uh, in other fights, like in this case, it worked out. But in other fights, keep in mind, like you want to be approaching from the back. Okay, but right now I'd be thinking game is not lost yet. I would feel <laughs> I would feel conflicted if I was you because of their builds. It's just it's so weird. Uh, let me see your talents: 300 attack range, 40 XP. Okay, I think that's good. I think those are fine this game. I've been testing out the new attack range talent's pretty new, but I think it's good. Just lets you like poke with your liquid fire really early, and then the XP is really nice because your gold talent is coming up, and then your level 25 talents are both really good. So let's see. Ugh, that's kind of awkward. I feel like Song was still going on. See, the thing is... Okay, this is a bad time to pause. It's a macro pyre. I'm going to finish this fight, and then I'll comment. Hmm, huge finger. Not enough to kill, though. Alright, right now you guys are in a good spot. Um... What was I about to say? Oh yeah, you guys have like fantastic team fight actually. So you're at the stage where Naga is online. This is now you're like you're approaching late game. As soon as she finishes his heart, this should be like, all right guys, we go. Like this is it, because Naga song into like epicenter or like Kunga boat macro pyre setup, or you know vice versa. You guys Sand King alt. Like you don't even need song to set it up. You have so many people setting things up. But Naga can song to set it up. Either defensively, like she was baiting, and then she uses it, and then you guys go in, or offensively. It's really hard to get Nagas to do that offensively in pubs, though. Unless they're, like, really good. Um, but, like, you guys have really good team fight. So, at this point, I think you should win the game. Like, I think Naga gets heart, you guys group, get another pick off, get Roshan, take these last two T towers, and then push high ground. And you guys don't even need to commit. Like, Naga Illusions can chip away at the tower, and then your plus 300 attack range, this is where it shines. You just throw it at towers. Um, so right now you guys are on track to win. So let's see what happens that you guys don't. This is why a 4 staff or like a Yules would be really good. You're working on it now. But uh, like if you got the 4 staff first. Your mana pool's pretty good, but never hurts to have more. And... I don't know, maybe a couple clarities would have helped. The thing is, you just have to keep in mind, like, Glimmer has a mana cost, and it'll affect the amount of mana you have. So, like, having that casual Bracer or a Force Staff would assist you a lot right now. Okay, you know how I just said that some games, there's not a major mistake that loses you the game? And sometimes it's just, like, a bunch of small things? This game, there should be something major, because you guys are in a great spot okay first of all there's no need for any of you to be here right now like you took the racks who cares about these buildings just ditch them they're all respawning you guys like you're not at you can't even cast your ult this guy's at half health no mana this guy's barely got mana this guy's at half mana another EMP will just wreck you guys necro just respawned and so technically you have five heroes to four, but in 13 seconds, Necrophos cannot get to you. In 13 seconds, Tusk can get to you. So really, it's a 5v4. And in fact, if I had to guess a major mistake, maybe you guys stay here too long and die. Or really, that's the major mistake that has to happen. You have to lose some big team fight and then snowball that into a loss. Because right now, you guys should win. And you're still... Like, right now you guys are like staying too long. And you're split up too. Which, don't forget, yeah, Slark, this is what's going to happen. Ooh, awkward. Mm, yeah. Someone, oftentimes you, as a support... Well, that's not true. Anyone can make the call, but... It helps if it's, like, a support person. Because usually the support has, like, more time to, like, make these overarching calls. You need to call to, like, get out there. Not just, like, when you guys are hanging out here, but then Naga Song to save you. 
and then you guys need to get out. Like, she started teleporting, and Kanko's, like, next to the Slark, because he thought you guys wanted to go in. seconds. It's kind of awkward. Like, you're chasing off alone. You'll never get a kill alone. So just, like, stay with your team. Right? You should place another sentry, like, somewhere around here. Maybe you're about to. But you're doing Roshan. Granted, he's dead, but you just want vision in this area, and you don't want them to have vision in this area. Slark is dead. You guys are up. Take that time to, like, deward this area. It is kind of awkward. Like, you're alone on your own. Which I know Slark is dead, but Invoker can solo kill you. Maybe... Yeah, you're pretty tanky. But, like, you don't want to give them that opportunity. You guys are in the lead. Just stick with your team. Um, they'll take this really quickly. If once they all come here, if they decide to come here, um, they don't need you to do this like pre attack. You should just like, uh, oops, wrong one. Okay, after you, like, you should place that sentry here, maybe up here. Like, it's cheating. This is bugged, right? I can tell they have a ward here. If I was you, I don't know if I would have played it here or not. I would have placed it either here, somewhere around this area, or like somewhere down here to spot like all of this to see someone running in i know slark is dead so i don't necessarily need to place a sentry here to like spot in here but if he was alive you should do that but i would definitely want a sentry somewhere in this area hopefully i'd be lucky and get this d ward and then once you do that just come stand back here stand here stand like here anywhere there you just want to be out of vision you don't want to be the first one to get gone on you uh, you have all these long spells, long range spells. You bought this Glimmer Cape to save somebody. You just want to be in the back and help them out. And of course, this was like turned out to be super free. They didn't even contest you. But like, don't take the risk. Don't be out here thinking, oh, they're not going to contest us because this is like this is the kind of like area where you could like die and then they can't. What can they do? Even if they have Aegis, they can't four v five, and now they have to wait for you, and. Like, that's not what you want. So you just want to, like, play it safe. You know you're winning. Keep playing safe. Because if you stay on this track, you will win. So stay back here. If they come in, easy ice path. Easy macro pyre. Completely cover this pit. Very safe play. Definitely a win in the team fight department. As long as everyone else then, like, uses their spells. And see, this is awkward. Like, this is... I'm suspecting this is where you start to lose the game. You guys are up here taking this, which I agree with. I think this is good. Sand King is over here. Doesn't need to be. He should be, like, more over here. He didn't even, like, get the whole wave, so it's not like it was to push mid. I'm not sure what had happened. Kunkka, what's he doing over here? He can see these heroes, and I'm suspecting he wants a kill. Maybe that's what he was calling for, like, let's come kill this guy. But you guys are in the lead. You don't need to, like, split up like this. Just, like, all be together. Don't get killed. That's like awkward. It's forcing you to like, you ran in this like awkward path over here, which could have gotten you picked off and killed. Um, especially when Slark comes up, you definitely don't want to do that. It's like, it's sort of working out here, but it's like this unnecessary risk. How do you guys lose this? Diving too hard here, I'll tell you that. Big. Um, at this point, I would be calling for the team. Like, I'm really low. I need to get out. I think you guys should get out too. Because we just took this tower. We're still in the lead. You have a full minute. You'd be like, guys, I have tranquils. Just give me a second. We can all heal up. Necrophos can, like, cue all of us. Instead, this is really awkward. Wow! What a player, dude. He should have died immediately. He bought time and a BKB. It's pretty good. That was kind of awkward. I think Kanka just got him killed. This is a little unnecessary. 
you've got two people dead right now. Conko really low. He walked out. These guys shouldn't be up here. I don't care that they have Aegis or that you guys are in the lead. There's, like, no reason to, like, do it right now. This is, like, it's nothing that can't be done in, like, another minute when you're all up. And she's still here, like, alone, verse 3. Now it's, like, throwing away the Aegis. Like, who cares if she gets this tower? And she gets out, but, like, did she need to lose the Aegis for that? To, like, get the tower low? And now Kunk is up here alone. Uh, there's no need. Just, you guys are so ahead. Just get all together again, and then just push again. You can even wait for the next Aegis. There's, uh, there's no need to get picked off like this. Which I feel is going to be why you guys lose this game. And I could tell, like, there was some tensions between, like, Sand King, Necro, the rest of the team. So, like, people don't want to, like, communicate and play together. And I think that's going to be your downfall. Unfortunately. Because he salvaged it. Like, when Slark was, like, way ahead, he could have won the game. Not him solo, but the team could have, like, gone off that to win. Did you guys manage to get a couple team wipes? Pulled it back in. Should have won. You have two racks, you know? Right now, you don't need to be here. Just be with your team. Again, same deal. Don't get picked off. You guys are in the lead. You just need standard safe play to win. And now you have to, like... Yeah, you came in from that angle so you can get killed. And that's what happens. Song's a little late. I don't know if she had it off cooldown. Ah, that timing was not great. I know it's hard to pull off on pubs. There was no need to even stay. I can get why they were tempted to stay, but the timing was not even good. Oh, man. I don't know why she just bought back. That's really weird. I feel like maybe she wanted to rat or something. There's no need for that. Look how far this wave is. And then they have to, like, go through the mid tower. You just chill. You are Jakiro. Macropire can clear a full creep wave. That's, like, an extra 30 seconds you can buy alone. So even if you have to buy back, you just drop Macro Pyre. No one else has to buy back for at least 30 seconds. And then between like Ice Path, Dual Breath. Oh, no, don't go in, don't go in. I know someone's back in their base, but like... Yeah, two cores. Just wait, just wait. I got the bear though, nice. I don't know if you have the Roche timer. I don't even have the Roche timer. <laughs> and I was just watching the replay. Hopefully someone has it on your team. But I would be thinking, okay, just wait for Roche. Play safe. But you guys are taking these like awkward skirmishes instead. Look what's happening here. Oh, that's definitely not going to help your chances. Like, right now, ask his pause is going on. Ask, how is this helping us win the game? Are we getting buildings? No. We're taking a team fight, and we're near their base, so if we win this team fight, we can get buildings. Do we have everyone to team fight? Sand King's up here. You had to, like, walk all the way in. The team fight was already going for a bit. Grant Naga just disconnected, so, you know, she was in better position. But... Do we risk this, like, 4v5 to end the game? What if we don't do it? Then you're still in the lead. You've lost a mid-racks, but it's not a big deal. Um, Roshan will be up in the next couple minutes. You know, just wait for that. Keep it cool. Recognize that you guys have thrown the lead a bit now. Originally, you were super in the lead. Now it's not looking so great. But you're still... I would still feel confident. I would not even have known that they had the lead for a little bit if I was you guys. I would think, okay, we're two racks, like, we've got this. Just wait for everyone to be up. Just go as a team. We win team fights. I like Scythe. Well, I, I would have liked four staff more. Uh, you don't need to do this, man. Are you going to get out? Uh, no, it looks like you're going to die. I think once you Yules, you might need to just immediately TP. 
What are you buying space? Alright, you shouldn't have lived. In my opinion, they should have killed you. So, good job on getting out. It did buy some space, but there was, like, no real need to take that risk. Like, you got, like, one liquid fire off on this tower. You know, it's not it's not game-changing. If you win a team fight there, Nog Auto attacks at once. That's the same thing, you know? It, it wasn't worth you, like, running in and possibly dying. So this is like, okay, the first thing was that tome at 10 minutes thing. Second thing is recognizing you guys are in the lead and you just need to get your team to make like standard safe play and not like take all these split up fights. Sand King getting picked off, see what I mean? You just like, okay, this guy's a bit salty, right? Um, my back's a little late. How's this gonna go? Ugh, you didn't need to walk in like that. Let's let's go back. Back a little more. Okay, some replay bugs. Okay, she songs. Let's decide what you do, right? It's like bugging out here. Um, macro pyres down. You've just used your ice path. I wasn't sure if it was down before the song or not because of like all the bugs and I was rewinding. Sand King just bought back. He is epicenter in six seconds. You guys probably didn't know that. I'm gonna guess, because otherwise I would call to like wait. This guy's got his ult, but they're all pretty full health. I would say this is not a fight you wanna take. In a four V five. Worst case, they get the Roshan. You guys are still in a pretty good team fighting position. It's still pretty good here. You guys can wait it out. You can push it like... Like I said, Naga, I think, is the strongest hero in this game in like a team fight situation. You know, she can still be killed one on like five if they gank her, that kind of deal. But in like a good team fight with Sand King stunning, Kunga throwing his spells, you throwing your spells, Naga wrecks these guys. Because none of them are great at clearing illusions. Invoker a bit. But like him alone, he doesn't have the magic damage to like clear all her illusions constantly. She can just keep sending illusions, wait a couple seconds, send more. So you guys are fine to go late. You don't need to take this fight. Even if they get Aegis, it's not the end of the world. Just stall. And you have Jakiro. Jakiro is amazing at stalling. So is Kanka, so is Sand King. So is Naga. So Necro's okay. Um... So I would not want to take this fight. I would I would be saying, like, get out, get out, get out, Naga. Like, your song is still going a bit more. Let's just get out of here. Are you guys, like, as equally distracted by this ice path? It's killing me. <laughs> um, you walking in here, definitely unneeded. Just stay back. Like, stay on this hill. Sand King's on this hill. He should be the one going in. Just stay back. Throw out ice breath on these guys as uh, the time runs out. Where are you, actually? When Ice Path comes off down, throw it again wherever Naga is, throw out a Liquid Fire, but just stay safe. Um, like, what are you going to do over here? You wanted to, like, get these guys, I think, with an Ice Path before Song ended, but uh, it's put you in a really bad spot. Jakira was a very long-range support, so make use of that. Stay on the edge. Stay on this high ground. Stay away from the Slark, who can solo kill you. So, and your Ice Path, you can still hit Lion. Like, Ice Path is really long. You could get it from, like, right here, I think. That would hit the edge of it. Um, so, yeah, just, you know, don't walk in. <laughs> Sand King goes in, but it's too late. Yeah. Now they're going to get it, and you guys have people dead. probably should have been watching that from your perspective more but i think you just bought back and went up and you guys have lost now i think <laughs> um because now you guys don't have buybacks uh now they can just come straight down and and although you're jakiro and are like really great at stalling macro pyre doesn't last forever you don't have an ag so like you know with an ag is like 30 seconds so it's 10 seconds you clear one wave buy a bit more time 
you guys maybe haven't lost. You guys are probably going to lose to T-Force, and it's going to come really close, right? But maybe you can stall enough. You have to, like, throw a macro pyre out here so that the creeps die as they walk in, and then they have to, like, wait for the next one. You cannot die, absolutely. But at this point, it's pretty bad because you have so many people dead. But Kanka's almost up, so... Yeah, you're too far up now. So this is your mistake. Like, I think the team made a whole mistake here. At this point, I would say, like, 90% lost. And then this mistake here is, like, nail in the coffin loss. While they're still, like, further up here, I would throw... Throw the macro pyre down, like, around here. Um, here, let's go back. Get rid of fog. Speed up a bit. Okay, now this part, it's already too soon here, like, a bit further back. Okay, you see them there, and you see these creeps coming in. So once the creeps are like here, I would throw out your macro pyre like right along this line, so that as the creeps come in, which unfortunately they're catapults, so it's not even going to work anymore. but. The creeps will just walk in a straight line down here. So if you throw the macro pyre out early, within those couple seconds that, like they are, they're not in it right away. But by the time they walk in it, the macro pyre should still have like half duration left. It should kill all of them if these catapults weren't here. And then you have like 30 more seconds for the next creep wave. And Kunkka's up. Hopefully Kunkka. What's Kunkka have? Oh, he doesn't have a blink. But uh, he shadow blades. He exits himself. Shadow blades out. Crits a creep wave, hopefully. Clears them all, right? Or boats the creep wave, torrents the creep wave. Gets you another couple seconds waiting for these guys to come back. But instead, like, you have that idea, but it's a little too late. It's literally seconds too late. But those seconds are what, like, lets them get close enough to then, like, see you and kill you. Then this guy tries to stall, but, like, what can you do? Yeah, so that one was unfortunate. You guys had that. Um, and so your mistakes there were, I mean, I pointed them out, I'm sure, uh, but, uh, the Tome one wasn't necessarily game losing, but it would help you out a lot to, like, have that level 6 sooner, and then around the 30 minute mark, I think, it was around then, after you guys had the two racks, even when you guys had the one racks, um, it's not strictly your fault, you know, it's a team thing, and a lot of times the other is your teammates getting picked off, or like starting when not everyone's there, but you just want to be with the team, and you just want standard play. Recognize that you guys have the lead, and that if things just play normally, you'll win, and just like tell that to your team. Just say like, hey guys, we just need to group up, like we will win. We, we practically have one, we have two racks, um, we just group up. We win team fights, just don't get picked off, and you would close out that game. But by like being split up, uh, getting picked off, that's how you guys end up losing that game. And uh, actually, if we look at the graph, yeah, right around here, I'm surprised how even it was. Honestly, uh, it was a surprisingly even game. But this is like when you guys are getting the racks, and then getting picked off, like you had it. Um. So as what you can do personally to win that game, not get picked off, I guess. You might have been able to like stall it out a bit more at the end if you didn't get picked off there, but like the game wasn't necessarily your fault at that point. So I would say overall you played pretty well, I think. You secured the laning stage for the most part, especially early for the Naga. You know, some optimization stuff, but honestly Naga had a good enough start. Um... Get the tome a little sooner. That'll let you do a bit more plays. Uh, and then your mid game. That was pretty good. You guys pulled it back even though you were losing. Uh, get the four staff instead of the uh, glimmer cape. And then uh, then try to get your team. Which like even if you say it. Not guaranteed it's going to happen. But you have to try as a support. You have to like call them all together. And try to say like please just guys come together and just like push together please please i know you guys are flaming each other but uh that's all that's the that's the best you can do as a support 
And uh, besides that, I would say, like, it's not really your fault after that. If they don't do it, they don't do it. But uh, at least recognize it, tell them to do it, and if you can do that, you have improved as a player. So, uh, hope that helps, you and anyone else who watches this. Uh, that was just one game. I still ended up rambling and taking forever. But uh, hopefully it was helpful, and I'll see about getting to that other game uh, when I have a second. Uh, yeah, that is all.